What's going on guys, Arax here, welcome back to another Monster Hunter World video and the next episode in my Weapon Workshop tutorial series. This is the series where I go over absolutely everything you could possibly want to know about a given weapon, right from the basic moves available to you all the way up to the main most efficient combos you should be using and some overarching weapon theory. If you guys missed last week's episode then I went over how to use the heavy bow gun and over the course of the next few weeks I'll be putting together guides to cover each of the 14 weapons in Monster Hunter World and today we're continuing that by turning our attention to another one of my favourite weapons, the sword and shield. The Sword and Shield is one of Monster Hunter World's most versatile weapons, offering fast combos, great mobility and basic defensive options. It's a weapon that is great in the hands of both beginners and veterans alike. It's the only weapon in the game that allows for complete item and slinger usage without having to sheath your weapon, which in turn allows for some truly unique and exciting playstyles. The ability to place bombs and traps at a moment's notice, use healing or buffing items to help your team, and now being able to fire off slinger ammo in an instant, the Sword and Shield really can do it all. And while on a per hit basis you might think this weapon doesn't do much damage, let me tell you in the right hands it's just as devastating as the rest. The fast combos make it an exceptional weapon when paired with a monster's elemental weakness, whilst also making it a great option for inflicting status effects on a target too. So if speed, mobility and instant access to your arsenal of items sounds appealing, then Sword and Shield might just be what you're looking for. To begin with, the Sword and Shield is often referred to as a beginner weapon, and while it is incredibly accessible, I don't really think that's a fair evaluation. It is a weapon that is good for beginners to try, given that it keeps you mobile, allows you to attack fast, in turn saving you from any lengthy hit lag animations that might otherwise cause you to get hit. The shield allows you to block basic attacks, making it good if you're fighting something you're not used to, and the ability to use items without having to sheath your weapon means you can heal much quicker when you inevitably get hit. But it's also important to understand that Sword and Shield is so much more. It's not a weapon you use to just learn the basics and then discard it when you feel you're comfortable like some sort of training wheels. On the contrary, it's a weapon that scales with you. The better you get, the more proficient you become, the more deadly it becomes in your hands. And sure, that same thing can be said for any weapon, but I feel like it's especially apparent in this scenario because this weapon is incredible when used correctly. Your damage with the sword and shield comes through fast and never ending combos. While on a per hit basis it might seem a little weak, where other weapons will pause in between combos, the sword and shield can just keep on going. I will however say that for this weapon and some of the other lighter, faster attacking weapons, you generally want to be a little bit more focused in the way you spec your loadouts. Where some weapons are more forgiving, allowing you to just pick them up and swing them around doing good damage with little regard for a monster's particular weakness, sword and shield is a weapon best paired with that knowledge. If the monster you're fighting is weak to fire, then bring a fire sword and shield, and use that speed to really dip into the elemental damage offered by your weapon. You want to inflict sleep or paralysis on your target? Then spec for that, and take full advantage of your ability to never stop attacking to proc those statuses much sooner. In short, this weapon offers a ton of variety and is incredibly satisfying to use. So, with all that covered, now let's go over the moves. Pressing triangle three times will perform your basic triangle combo. Chop, side slash into sword and shield attack. And while the start of this chain will form the beginning of your bread and butter combo, that final hit is generally speaking something you want to avoid. When compared to other moves in your arsenal, it's slow and you can't roll out until the end of the animation. So as you'll see later on in our main combos, we'll always skip that final hit. Pressing circle three times consecutively will instead perform the standard and much more powerful circle combo. Lateral slash, return stroke into round slash. And that final hit, the round slash recently received a buff in the most recent weapon patch too, so it's now even stronger than before. The circle combo is fast, powerful and will form the crux of your bread and butter combo. You can link both of these combos together with three triangle inputs followed by three circle inputs, but as mentioned that final triangle hit we really want to avoid, so better than that is two triangle inputs into three circle inputs. This removes the slow attack from the equation and gives you a strong fast combo. There are a couple of moves we can add to the start of this as you'll find out shortly, but consider that your foundation. Also keep in mind that at any point during your combos you can press X to roll out should you need to, plus you can use this as a means to loop and reset your basic combo. Additionally that round slash that occurs at the end of the circle combo, there's also another way to access that. Following any attack you can press triangle plus circle to go directly into the round slash. This is especially good to do if you see the monster about to move and you know you're about to lose your opening. It allows you to end your combo with a strong hit. However, pressing triangular circle on its own will perform the advancing slash. This moves you forward a good distance, making it a great option for closing the gap between you and a monster, as well as beginning your combos and also mounting. See, this move is also terrain sensitive, and by that I mean depending on where you perform it, it has additional properties. While doing this on the ground simply moves you forward and acts as an opener, 
If you do this into a ledge, you'll jump up into the jumping rising slash, and from there you can press triangle again for a jumping slash. These attacks do mounting damage, so it's a great way to mount a monster that's perhaps up a step or a ledge. Additionally, doing this move off a ledge does the jumping advancing slash, again with triangle follow-up, also dealing mounting damage. You can also do this down a slope to initiate a sliding slash, which can then be followed with subsequent triangle inputs, again dealing mounting damage. And finally, doing this into one of those runnable walls will initiate one of the coolest moves for the sword and shield, the helm splitter. This will see you run up the wall, spin around and perform a sword plant. This attacks multiple times on the way down and also deals mounting damage in the process. It's an incredibly satisfying hit to land and can also be a nice move for cutting tails or breaking parts if you land it correctly. Additionally, if you press forward and triangle while your weapon is sheathed, you'll draw directly into the advancing slash too, so that move can either be done with triangle and circle whilst drawn, or as an unsheathed attack. Now, if we return for a moment to the circle combo again, if you instead begin that combo by pushing forward, or any direction for that matter, and then press circle three times, you'll instead go into the shield bash combo. Shield attack, shield bash, hard bash. This does decent damage, not as much as your bread and butter circle combo, so it won't act as a replacement, but it does deal impact damage, so it can be used should you want to KO a monster. However, the next move, this is a new addition in World, it's an incredible move, and yet the game doesn't even tell you about it. It's not in the Hunter notes, it's not on the command prompt, it is a crime that this is hidden. Following any attack, if you input an alternate direction and press triangle, you'll perform the spiral slash. Now, by alternate direction, I mean a direction other than the one that you're facing. So if you are facing forward, you can input left, right, or back. If you're facing left, you can input up, down, or right, as an example. Basically, a direction other than the one you're facing. This spiral slash then allows you to seamlessly rotate where you're facing and continue your combo. Instead of rolling out to reposition, you can instead make directional adjustments mid-fight and mid-combo and never stop attacking. Furthermore, if you input a second triangle press after the spiral slash, you follow it with a thrust, which is a fast and actually pretty powerful move. And once again, from that point onwards, you can continue your combo. The beauty of this move is that it can be worked into any part of your combo. So if during your attack the monster moves a little bit or you overshoot the part you're trying to hit, you don't have to stop attacking, you simply use the spiral slash to adjust where you're facing and keep the combo going. You can even use this to dart between your monster's legs if you're going for that trip or if you're trying to rack up an abnormal status through rapid attacks. This move is honestly such an amazing addition and it genuinely does allow for never ending combos. Moving on from there, let's now talk about the back step. Following the basic circle combo, if you press circle once more, you'll perform this back step. This move serves a couple of different purposes. However, before we dive into those, it's also worth noting you can access this outside of the circle combo by pulling back and pressing circle after any attack. So it can be worked in mid combo when you see you have an opening. It can also be accessed from guard, but I'll go over that shortly. Now the back step, after pulling back and pressing circle, if you continue to hold back, you'll remain in the location you hop to and perform a rising slash. This allows you to move back and stay back, so it can be used as an evasive option if you need to put some distance between you and the monster. Alternatively, if you let go of the analog stick after initiating the back hop, you'll instead hop backwards and then move forward performing the advancing slash. That's the exact same advancing slash that can go up ledges or off walls. It's also important to note that the back hop animation has invulnerability frames during the initial back hop, so you can use this to dodge certain moves or even roars. However, the main reason you'll be using this move is the charge slash. If you initiate the back hop and then continue to hold circle, you'll charge. And then upon letting go or the charge animation completing, you'll leap forward performing the charge slash. This is one of your strongest moves and it's something you'll be using a lot, but it doesn't end there. If the charge slash connects with the monster, you'll then perform a scaling slash, which will launch you into the air. And at this point, you have two options. You can press triangle to perform the jumping slash. This is the weaker of your two options, but it deals mounting damage, so it can be used to mount a monster, making the sword and shield an exceptional weapon at continuous mounting. Alternatively, following the scaling slash, you can instead press circle to perform the falling bash. This will see you dive downwards with your shield, dealing good damage, and it not only deals damage on impact, but also when the hit connects with the ground. Since it used your shield, this deals impact damage, so it can KO a monster, but more importantly, this does not do mounting damage. You won't be able to mount a monster using this move, and it's for that reason that this combo is so incredibly important. This simple rotation will become one of your biggest damage combos for this weapon. See the second you land, you can pull back and hold circle and go back into the charge slash, and you can keep this combo going indefinitely, making it an exceptional way to output some good damage numbers with this weapon. Just keep in mind that back plus circle is always relevant to where you're facing, so if the falling bash turns your character, back won't always be directly back, sometimes it might be to the right or to the left. Additionally, during the charge slash, you can move your analog stick to slightly alter the direction that you jump, and when you're airborne, 
If you push your analog stick in the direction that you want to hit, you can twist when landing the attack, so you actually have a good deal of control with this move. And again, remember that if at any point you overshoot your location and end up facing the wrong way, use the spiral slash to put you back where you want to minimize your downtime between attacks. Now finally for the weapon, let's talk about the shield. Holy R2 allows you to block. The shield provides you with basic defensive capabilities. It's not as strong as a lance or gun lance shield, but it will still save you in a pinch. You can use it to block things like Nogagante's dive bombs should you need to, but just keep in mind that blocking big, hard hitting moves uses a lot of stamina, so make sure your stamina is maxed out if you intend to block a big hit. You can also draw directly into guard, again by holding R2 when your weapon is sheathed. If you then press circle whilst guarding, you'll perform a guard slash, not especially useful, but you can attack from behind guard. However, if you press triangle whilst holding R2, you'll perform the rising slash. This is a useful move since it's a great combo opener. Remember that bread and butter combo from earlier? If you put the rising slash at the beginning, it now flows so much better. R2 plus triangle, followed by two additional triangle inputs, and then into the circle combo. Again, removing the slow third triangle hit from the equation, but now we have a nice combo with a good opener. Of course, you won't use the rising slash in the loop, but it's a good way to start. You can also use this to detonate bombs too if nobody is there to help, and you can then go straight into the back step and take advantage of those iframes to set it off and not send yourself flying in the process. Additionally, I mentioned earlier that you can go into the back step from guard. If you hold down R2, then pull back and press circle, you can go directly into the charge slash, which is handy if you're hunting solo and you want to use one of your strongest hits to wake up a sleeping monster. One quick tip too, when you're first trying this move, sometimes the motion of pulling back before pressing circle causes you to rotate slightly, which then results in the guard slash instead. A good tip for this is to simply hold R2 and then press circle first and then directly after pull back. It has to be quick, so it's literally press circle pull back, but this ensures that you don't rotate, so you should see that you pull this off perfectly every time. Of course, if you want to use items, a feature unique to the Sword and Shield, then whilst guarding, pressing square will let you consume your currently selected item. Good if you want to place traps or bombs mid-hunt, or throw down a trank bomb. It is however worth calling out that you might still want to consider sheathing your weapon to heal. If you drink a potion like this, with your weapon drawn, you can't sprint and drink it. Meanwhile, if your weapon is sheathed, you can. So if you want to move and heal, you might want to consider doing that. You also have access to full slinger controls too, holding down L2 will see you flip your blade backwards which looks super cool, and from there you can then use your slinger like normal, again good for quick flashes or other items like that. And if you want to use wedge beetles, then hold down L2 and press circle, another new addition thanks to the most recent patch. Now that's pretty much it for the core moves, we'll go over your main combos in just a moment, but let's very quickly recap aerial moves. Sliding down a hill and pressing triangle triangle will see you draw into a jumping advancing slash, followed by a jumping slash. Keep in mind that any of the airborne slashes with the blade do mounting damage. On top of that, the one we covered earlier, but triangle plus circle down a hill, followed by subsequent triangle inputs will go from the sliding slash into your aerial attacks. Jumping off a ledge and pressing triangle does the jumping slash. Meanwhile, pressing triangle plus circle to advance off a ledge will do the advancing slash. Running up a wall and pressing triangle does the basic jumping slash. And then finally, triangle plus circle once again into that incredible helm splitter move. Now, with all of the moves covered, how do we tie it all together? What combo should you be using to do the most damage? Well, first up, the bread and butter combo we went over earlier. When you're on the ground, attacking the legs, the tail, or wherever you decide to hit should an opening present itself. This combo begins with the rising slash on R2 plus triangle, followed by two more triangle inputs and three circle inputs. Upon completing this, you can then roll to reset the start of the combo again, or you can use spiral slash to adjust yourself and loop again. This does good damage, attacks fast, making it a good way to take advantage of any element or admiral status you might have on your weapon. Of course, you can extend this combo by adding a charge slash at the end and follow that scaling slash with a falling bash for maximum damage. And from there, you can then press triangle to go directly into the rising slash to reset. So this whole combo can be looped. Of course, if you'd rather mount, then you can swap the falling bash for the jumping slash. But if damage is your focus, then falling bash is king. If you want to tighten that up a bit and just dip into the big damage, then you can, as mentioned earlier, simply loop the charge slash falling bash combo. You can either go into charge slash following an attack, or you can do it from guard. If a monster is down and you can access the weak spot, looping this is how you'll be doing the most damage. Of course, if you want to get in more hits for the status build up, the previous combo is better, but if your focus on that point in the fight is damage, then you can't beat this. Another option is to go directly from a circle combo with three circle inputs into a spiral slash and a quick thrust, at which point you can then loop back into your circle combo. This uses the strongest ground based attacks, allows you to keep the combo going indefinitely thanks to spiral slash, and even includes that quick jab that does good damage. And finally, another version of this, following any attack, perform the spiral slash into thrust, and then press triangle plus circle to go into that final round slash, and then loop that instead. This essentially combines a few strong hits and turns them into a short looping combo. 
Now to summarize all of this, since I appreciate there are two very different playstyles here, one of them is a fast hitting ground based combo that aligns as you'd expect with the intended playstyle for the Sword and Shield, a weapon known for its fast attacks and synergy with elements. Meanwhile the other combo is a tad slower and focuses much more on bigger raw damage hits, so which is better? And the answer is they both have value, and this is precisely why a Sword and Shield is so versatile. If you have constant access to a monster's weak spot and you've picked a weapon that targets its elemental weakness, then those fast hitting, never ending combos are an exceptional damage option. Meanwhile, if your weak spot access is a little out of reach or your weapon of choice is perhaps a little more raw focused, then the jumping shield bash combo is an exceptional damage dealer. So they can and should both be used based on the way that you want to use this weapon. Now, to round things out, let's very quickly go over some handy armor skills you might want to consider when using this weapon. As always, your typical damage focused skills like attack boost, weakness exploit, critical eye, critical boost, agitator, peak performance, or even maximum might, any of these provide value and can be great for this weapon, especially the affinity and crit focus ones. However, on top of that, as mentioned, Sword and Shield is often best when paired with a monster's elemental weakness, so slotting in the respective element attack gems will help, and again, keep in mind, you generally speaking only ever need two or three gems to hit the elemental cap for your weapon, so beyond that point, don't waste any more slots. Also to go hand in hand with elemental builds, you have crit element, the rattle or set bonus. This is a very good skill to have if you want to build around an element. Also the same goes for abnormal statuses, if you're running a status build then slot in the relevant status attack boost, these don't work like the elemental ones so you definitely want to boost this up to level 3 for maximum effectiveness. And the Zora Magdaros set bonus pairs nicely with abnormal status so consider using that if you plan to spec this way. On top of that handicraft, this is good for a lot of weapons but it's very often used for sword and shield and it's very nice if you can unlock that white sharpness. And to pair with that, you of course have protective polish allowing you to maintain that sharpness for longer. Wide range is also another great skill for sword and shield users, it allows you to support your team by allowing items that you consume to benefit your team too, and since you can use your items without having to sheath your weapon, this skill is perfect for a more support focused playstyle. Mushroom Mancer 2, while definitely not exclusively an SNS skill, if you're running a set with wide range then Mushroom Mancer also allows you to use mushrooms for certain effects, so this can again go hand in hand with that support playstyle. Bombardier is another good one, often synonymous with the SNS Sleep Bomb playstyle. Again, not exclusive, but since you can drop bombs on the fly, it allows you to get the most out of them when you intend to use them for damage. And then finally, Evade Window, useful if you want some more invulnerability on your rolls. The old school way of setting off bombs with this weapon used to be to use Evade Window, slice the bomb with a rising slash, and then roll out to avoid the blast, but now that we have backstep, it's not quite as necessary. Now again, there can of course be a few other skills you might want to consider using, you could even go and use guard or guard up for your shield, but at least to get you started, those are some useful skills to consider. Now finally, as always, to round out the tutorial, we're going to dive into a complete hunt in the arena to demonstrate how to use this weapon in combat and hopefully tie everything you've just learned together. I'm also going to be showcasing two hunts in this one, or at least two segments, so that I can illustrate both styles of play for the Sword and Shield. For this hunt, we're taking on a high rank Rathian, and I'm using my Devil Joe SNS set since Rathian is weak to dragon, plus it's new and it's one of my favourite Sword and Shields. To begin with, we're going to open by going for a mount, it's a quick and easy way to get some nice free damage at the start since the early mount threshold is so low. That being said, the first jump attack did miss, but a well timed roll allowed me to dodge the raw, in turn giving me the opening I need to land a successful jump attack and snag that mount. If we then fast forward to mount completion, since Rathian is down and the head is in a good place, I'm going to use my charge slash falling bash combo since it is my big damage rotation and this is a perfect opening, so I'll loop this until Rathian gets up, at which point I'll need to account for her moving around again. Also notice that any time I'm facing the wrong way, I will use spiral slash to rotate so as to keep the combos flowing. Next up, since Rathian likes to run around a lot and do that annoying back and forth run, I'm going to use my ability to quickly access items to place a trap so that I can get some more damage in. Now to begin with, I start my damage rotation again, but since my placement is a little bit off and I'm by the legs, I'm going to do what Sword and Shield is good at, and that's attacking the legs to get that trip, since when Rathian goes down, I'll again have another opening to jump attack the head. Now I could go for more mounts if I really wanted to, and if I was playing in a team, I may consider doing that more so, but since I'm hunting solo, I'm more interested in using these openings for quick damage, hence why I'm focusing on the falling bash. And since I've been landing so many of these falling bashes on the head, we're also able to proc a KO, which gives us an even bigger window to dive back in and do more damage. Now after that, my cat put Wrath to sleep. Now normally I would use bombs and I do have bombs on me, but for illustration purposes I wanted to do it this way. Assuming you have sword and shield and you're hunting solo, 
then this would be your strongest weapon based wake up. Of course if you're hunting in a team, let someone with a heavier hitting weapon do this and ideally use bombs, but again for illustration purposes this is something you can do to wake up a monster. That way it ensures that you're multiplying one of your strongest damage hits. But after that the fight plays out pretty much as normal and very shortly after Rathian is dead. Nice and simple. However, if we now very quickly swap over to a high rank Diablos hunt, this one is out in the wild since the arena quest isn't in rotation, but the principle is the same. For this, I'm running with the Legiana Sword and Shield, since Diablos is weak to ice, and this build is spec for max ice damage with three frost jewels, as well as the Rathalos crit element set bonus, on top of the usual attack boost and weakness exploit skills. In this hunt, I'm going to be fighting using the ground based combos, and I'm going to take advantage of the speed to dip into the elemental damage offered by the weapon. There isn't really much that I need to explain in this segment, essentially I'm going to be sticking out the legs and I'm going to aim to keep the combos going as much as possible. I'm largely using the circle combo and using the spiral thrust to reposition and keep me attacking. I will take advantage of my ability to use items on the fly to fire screaming pods anytime Diablos digs and then dip into the full combo when I need to move and reset. Given that you can roll out of any part of your combos, it's also really easy to dodge any attacks Diablos may decide to do. And of course, if you were to pair this with an evasion mantle, which is something people often do, then you can also get some nice damage bonuses on top. Now, this run wasn't especially clean, I did get hit a few times, but I still got a pretty quick kill time on this regardless, so it's fair to say that you can and should use the Sword and Shield in a manner of different ways. The Falling Bash combo is great for raw damage and KO, Meanwhile, these ground combos are exceptional if you've built a loadout around a particular element or a status. So decide how you want to play and have fun. But that, my friends, is pretty much it. That is my tutorial for the Sword and Shield. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. If you have any questions, by all means let me know, but otherwise keep it locked. And the next one will be on Sunday next week. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed the video. And thank you for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.